<laughs> and before that, of course, we had K Sun, Feel the Vibe. Great song, Natalie. Okay, we've got Kara Urquhart here from uh, New Road Coaching. And uh, Kara, it's great to have you here. Thanks for having me. Now, we're, uh, it's, well, we were just talking before we came on uh, that you've got a really uh, great background in the entertainment business as a TV producer and stuff like that. You were just uh, naming some of the stars. It was like a who's who of Canadian uh, entertainment, like Paul Anka and uh, Brent Butt and uh, the queen yeah well i wouldn't i wouldn't say the queen is canadian but i guess it's well she's on enough. our money close enough <laughs> at least for now yeah but it would, have, it would have been the other way around we would have been british as opposed to her being canadian but yeah 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 no i've worked with a lot of people over the years a lot of celebrities um over the course of my being in the production industry yeah yeah a lot of interesting folks that's great mm -hmm. but then you got into something completely different yeah and do you want to is there a story behind that do you want to maybe uh you know yeah i um the entertainment business is probably my first love um but i found that um reality television was starting to kick the chops out of me mm -hmm. um i came up through the world of uh, single camera tv and worked mostly in dramatic television and when reality television started wait a sec what do you mean single camera tv <laughs> what do i mean by that said? yeah i mean like there's a camera there's a it's not like multi-camera it's not there's multi-camera and single single camera television do you know the difference i i'm like finding studio, out right now I okay hope. so in studio in yeah. studio television mm -hmm. or like something you might shoot in in-house at cbc or something would probably be a sitcom that kind of thing would be multi-camera there's many cameras in the room yeah and the director's calling shots from a from a control room like switch, switch, switch. Correct. Yeah, yeah that would be multi-camera television. That's what we're doing right now here. Single camera television is when you see feature films out on the street and there's yeah. a main camera operator uh -huh. and, and a DOP, a director of photography, and all the, everything revolves around their world and the director's world in that moment. Okay, so you're shooting one thing at a time. I'm you're shooting you, you say your lines, yeah. I'm shooting you, you say your, you know, it goes, it goes like that. That's single camera television. Okay. And then the editor does the work later. Really? They only use one camera for that, really? Really? Yeah. Unless you're doing a lot of like stunt work and then you might have three or four cameras because you want to catch it from a million different angles. Right. right? But what about like a dialogue? A dialogue between two actors? It's done separately. Really? Yeah. So I, they're in the same room. So yeah. you, you're, you're talking to me. I'm talking to you. Mm -hmm. Camera maybe. I don't know where the camera's on me or you at this moment, but let's pretend it's on me. So I'm saying all my lines mm -hmm. to you and you're, we're, we're having our moment. Mm -hmm. And then the lighting, everything shifts so that you, you go down for like could be half an hour, 20 minutes, while they shift lighting and everything on you. So now the, the camera's shooting scene. you, I'm off camera saying my lines to you, right. and you're saying your That's lines. That's weird. That's how it's done. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Okay. So that was a long, a long way of getting around to why I'm here now. Yeah. But um, yeah, so anyway, then reality television happened, and we all know what that is. Well... You want me to explain that well, to you? Well, I want to know because you mentioned it. What it <laughs> You've been what in it, this room too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All you have to do is turn a TV on to find out what reality no, TV is. No, I know. But you, yeah. you said it kicked the chops out of your or something. Well, right? it sort of did because, and I mean, no offense to reality TV, it's just that the way I was taught to make television was totally different. And I think it, you know, I was finding that my resume was getting longer and longer and my paychecks were getting tighter and tighter because a lot of people can make television now. Mm -hmm. There used to be sort of a hierarchy and a, and, a, and, a, and a learning curve. And now you can pick up a camcorder and, and, and run around and make television. And I, it's not good, bad, or otherwise, it's just different. Um, different than the world that I knew. And I was just getting frustrated by that. So um, at the end of the day, I wanted to find out if maybe there was a way that I could navigate my waters, n navigate the waters through that period of my life. So I thought maybe I should hire a coach yeah. to help me with that. Um, and at the end of the day, uh, I ended up at someone's cottage up north in Muskoka on a dock drinking wine with her sister-in-law who happened to be in from BC and she was a coach. And by the end of the bottle of wine, I decided maybe the plan would be for me to go back to school and get certified and open a company and change careers. So wow. that's what happened. Okay, so it was the wine. It was the, it's always <laughs> the wine. <laughs> it's always the wine. Really, so that's, uh, but it's interesting to think that uh, that coaching would be, uh, you know, you kind because of, you're kind of in a way, in one sense, you're going there for the money. 
So, sorry, say again? Well, uh, uh, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah. I mean, part of it was that the money, as you say, the checks were getting smaller and smaller in TV. Yeah. So in a, in a way, part of your decision was financially based, that there's m more money in coaching. Um, you know what? I actually had nothing to do with my decision. Um, it was really more about have, being in control of my own destiny. Okay. It was really what it was about. Right. Now, why coaching? I mean, there, there's a lot of, and it, you know, more than just the wine, but, you know, there's a lot of other things that, a lot of other things where you could be in control of your destiny, at least in theory. Right. Why uh, coaching? Why was the coaching so appealing to you? I think it was appealing because I found that um, in the position that I was in in television, I was, I was already mentoring people. I was already troubleshooting. I was already brainstorming. I was already creating little businesses as you go along because when you start a production you start with nothing a pen and a paper and a script and, and money maybe if you're lucky and then mm -hmm. you build something um, and so I already I already knew all that I was already doing all that and what I thought would be really interesting to be able to do is to be able to help teach other people how to do that and to bring the production mentality to Bay Street mm -hmm. so in in the entertainment business um, as you, you probably know there's no such thing as no you know, if, it, if it's raining in the script, it's going to rain on a sunny day in Toronto. We're, we're going to make it rain. There's mm -hmm. no such thing as no. We're going to shut down Bay Street if we have to. We're going to do whatever we have to do to mm -hmm. shoot what we're, what we're going to shoot. So you learn that when you grow up in that industry. And it's really fun to be able to take that perspective to people who work in this kind of a world mm -hmm. um, with a lot of structure and try to blow that out a little bit. So I, I really um, in thought that that would be kind of a fun thing to be able to do was to... to to give back in some way what I have learned to people who don't who didn't grow up in that kind of a world who are in a much more structured world mm -hmm. let them think a little bit more creatively a little bit bigger a little bit broader and take a few more chances in other words there's no such thing as no so there's no excuses there's no there's no reason why you can't do what you say you want to do correct okay that's kind of interesting mm -hmm. so um, now you were already being coached before you made this decision no Okay. So what was it? Because you mentioned you were looking for a coach. I was looking. I was thinking about how yeah. to, you know, kind of wrap my head around what the shifts I needed to make in the entertainment world. And that led me to this doc mm -hmm. in the wine and the person and the, the whole thing. And um, anyway, and so then I just, I just made a decision. And I am coached now because any good coach has a coach. I mean, you have to walk the talk. Mm -hmm. um, and... But I didn't. I'd never been coached before that ever. I didn't even know what it was. Never heard of it. Okay. So then, what was it from? So this other person on the dock was also a coach at the yes. time. So then, what did you do to actually become a coach from that, or what was the road from making that mm -hmm. decision on that dock to actually hanging out a shingle and being a coach? hanging the shingle? Yeah. Well, that's the interesting thing about coaching is anybody can hang the shingle. Anybody can hang a coaching shingle because it's not like a, a being a psychologist where you have to have a certain you have to have certain credentials to be a psychologist or you can't practice. In the coaching world, you, any, anybody can hang a shingle. However, um, there are schools that give out certification and there, there is the International Coaches Federation, which is the body of coaching. Um, I wanted to be certified as a coach and I wanted to be acknowledged by the federation because I think at some point um, the door will close on that and I want to be on the inside of the door when it does. Mm -hmm. So. I went to a school called the Coaches Training Institute. Um, their main office is in Los Angeles, but they teach all over the world. I got certified as a coach, and then I joined the International Coaches Federation and got accredited by them too. So that's what I did. Okay. How long ago was that? Like how long? Five years ago. Five years. Okay. Yeah. Now. Um, it's like another voice. There's another voice in the room. <laughs> yeah. That's Natalie. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, what? Uh, for example, what kind of people, is there a certain kind of person or people in a certain kind of career that you like or you prefer to deal with in your work? Yeah, I, um, I work with a lot of entrepreneurs. They're some of my favorites just because they build things, they create things. They're, they're, it's sort of like building a production. It's sort of like building a movie or a TV show. Um, so I really love working with entrepreneurs. Um, I work with a lot of executives. I like working with entertainers, obviously. Um, athletes are sort of my new thing to, to work with. Um, same thing there. Athletes are kind of mini entrepreneurs in a way, especially when they finish being an athlete. Um, so th th that's, those are the people I like to work with. And they're all individual people. It's not corporations. It's one-on-one -on -one coaching. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. So. 
Um, now, what does the process look like if somebody gets in touch with you? What is the coaching process? How does it begin? Yep. Um, it, all my coaching is done over the phone. So I have clients all over the place. I have clients in the UK and the United States, different places in Canada. Um, it's all half an hour once a week. My clients will call me um, in my office from wherever they are in the world. Sometimes they're in airports traveling. Sometimes they're at home. Uh, and we have a half hour session once a week and they will bring to the table prior to that we do a bunch of sort of investigation stuff around what makes them tick what they're shooting for how they work you know what how they're getting in their own way what are their fears what's their their level of sort of their fear threshold in terms of why they aren't they taking the next risk or the next chance mm -hmm. talk about all that kind of stuff we work through all that and then we set a plan about how do you, you know where do you want to go and how do you want to get there and every week I hold them accountable to that plan mm -hmm. and um, and I, you know, they get like quote unquote homework that they have to do um, weekly, and I hold them accountable to that. And what happens if they don't well. do their homework? Yeah, and how do you know that they're doing it? Because they over the phone they could yeah. say they're doing. I did it. my homework. Well, it's not like grade school where you're, you know, you got to tick the little boxes. It's not that we're talking about, you know, real interactive stuff in society and people yeah. who are building business. They're there because they want to want to be there. They've hired me because. I mean, they're paying me a lot of money to, to talk to them every week. They're not, there's no point in having me if you don't want to participate. Mm -hmm. There's just no point. So sometimes they don't always do what they say they're going to do, and that's okay. We all fall back a little bit, but that's my job is to help bring mm -hmm. you back into the game. You're trying to help them get their money's worth here. Exactly. Right? Yeah. If they don't yeah. succeed, I haven't done my job. Yeah. And I'm not happy. I mean, it's, I always say if my client's not happy, I'm not happy because that's, that's the job. Now, what kind of uh, results have you seen, like in your practice, what kind of specific results? Because they're, in a, in a sense, the money they're paying you is an investment. Yeah. So theoretically, they should be getting a lot more, or some more at least, back in return in excess yeah, of what absolutely. they've been investing. Absolutely. I mean, they've got, you know, the, it's interesting because the investment that they're making isn't really in me, it's in themselves. I just mm -hmm. happen to be there kind of, you know, guiding the, guiding the train. Um, and yeah, great results in different without, I mean, I obviously I'll coaching's confidential, so I can't really give too much information about certain things, but I can give you some examples. I mean, mm -hmm. I had a, a gentleman who, uh, here's one extreme example on one end and I'll give you something on the other end of the scale. Um, my oldest client was 72 years old and his wife had passed away and he called me because he was in a place of, of grieving and mourning and not really being, not really understanding who he was as a person anymore. He was, he was defining himself as a, as a, a widower. Um, and so we talked a lot about that and, and at the end of the day, he was a very clever man, he's a professor and, and um, at the end of the day, about f I'd say five weeks into it, we had changed his entire perspective about who he was and it was really because he was hanging on to that image of himself. Um, and so jump forward, he's now remarried, carrying on with his life and <laughs> seven, you know, two. having a lot of fun. So that's really cool for me. I mean, I was I really excited to participate in that. Mm -hmm. in that with him mm -hmm. and of course I learned tons from him I mean he's older than I am I got lots back from him when I was talking to him it was it was terrific on the other um, other end I've got uh, you know I can I can think of another client who's maybe at the other end of that scale is a student coming out um, 20 22 23 years old uh, has a, a degree uh, in uh, journalism and uh, you know sort of trying to get into the workplace and trying to you know figure out what where she wants to go and um, so came to me with that and so we ended up working, you know, she, she had her idols that she wanted to meet, um, feeling she could never meet them. I won't name who they are, but within two weeks, she had, had met them already, talked to them, was interviewing them, and now she has a great job that she really likes. So it's kind of, um, it sounds like I'm boasting when I say that, but it's not about me. It's about these people mm -hmm. doing the work, basically. Mm -hmm.